part series, I'm Good. Philippians chapter number four, and I want to read into your hearing. I'll just read uh, verse number 13 today because that's the concluding verse for this I'm Good series. I won't be before you very long on today because I did most of the heavy work on last week. And I just want to reiterate on some things and close this two-part series out. Next week, somebody say next week. Fellowship Fifth Sunday. Fellowship Fifth Sunday. I want you to get busy inviting people to church. We can't make them come, but we can do our part by inviting. Amen. Plant the seed. And, um, you know, we can start off with a lot of our own. Amen. I'm going to be messaging our own members and getting them to come out to fellowship with us because if we're having fellowship fifth Sundays, amen, we need to be here to greet uh, the visitors. Amen. 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 So we're going to get busy. Amen. I need you to dedicate yourselves on getting busy, inviting people uh, to come and worship with us on Fifth Sunday. A lot of churches, I don't know if they still do, but used to not have church on Fifth Sunday. And some of the members would be, you know, looking for somewhere to go. So let's let's be open and available on Fifth Sunday. Excuse me. Uh, so let's, let's get busy marketing uh, our church and inviting people to come and worship with us. Amen. Amen. First things first, all of us that are here today, let's, let's, let's be sure that we can make it back uh, God's will on next week. If you have it, Philippians chapter number four, verse number 13, we stand on your feet in uh, respect for the word of God, all that are able. Amen. This is a very, very, very popular passage of scripture, so let's just read it together. Amen. On the count of three, one, two, three. Three, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Let us do our Samani prayer. Repeat this after me, please. Father, Father please bless the preacher and the preaching of your word. Please bless the preacher and the preaching of your word. Bless me to hear, do, and grow in Christ. Bless me to hear, do, and grow in Christ. As a result of receiving your word. As a result of receiving your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Ushers, you may retire. Let's give them a round of applause. Amen. God bless you. I'm good. Part two. I'm good. Part two. On last week, as we talked about the book of Philippians chapter number four, and we were reminded of how Paul was in prison when he wrote this letter to the church of Philippians. It was in the result of a gift that was sent by Epaphroditus to Paul from the book, from the church of Philippians. And Paul was telling them that he appreciated what they had done for him. But he was not in need of anything. At first look, you would think that Paul was being a little inconsiderate of what they had done. You know, when you give somebody a gift and they say, well, I don't need it, but I'll take it. Some of us will take that the wrong way. But you have to understand the spirit of Paul and the lesson that he was teaching to the church. You see, Paul was always teaching something through the church. Through every circumstance and every situation, Paul took advantage of the learning opportunity. Amen. Uh, that, that is to say that Paul didn't waste a lot of words or opportunity. Now, now, now here's the first problem. I like teaching and preaching problems and solutions, right? So here's the first problem. There's too many people in church today who waste a lot of words and opportunities. You see, the person that talks a lot all of the time, you have to weed out what's important and what's not important. And, and, and when they ramble on and on and on, that's why I try not to ramble too much in preaching, but when they continue to ramble, eventually, you're going to lose insight. Eventually, you're going to lose interest in what they have to say. 
As I've said plenty of times, uh, the, the, the human attention span is no longer than 30 minutes. So when you ramble on and on and on and get to your point 30, 40 minutes afterwards, people have already tuned you out. And it doesn't matter how important the information you have is, if you've talked that long without getting to some type of point, then, then whatever you say is probably going to go over my head through one ear, out the other, or whatever else we like to say. And so, so Paul took advantage of this situation receiving this gift. He says, I'm here in prison. Somebody I'm talking to today, whether here or virtually, may feel like you're locked up. I know the choir some break every chain, but you don't feel like your chain has been broken. You don't feel like that you're free, even though the Bible says, amen, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And even though you understand that you are in the presence of God, there's something binding you on this morning. You still don't feel free. You still don't feel like you've been loosed from your situation, honey. Ladies and gentlemen, that is called going through the process. Just because you don't feel the freedom right now does not mean that you are not free. Just because you don't feel the chains being broken right now does not mean the chains are not being broken. Remember, we serve a God that works from the end to the beginning. And when Jesus said it is finished, he meant that it is finished. But there's still a process. Somebody shout, there's still a process. There's still a process that has to take place for you to learn the lesson that God is getting you from. Amen. Case in point, Paul is sitting in, in prison talking about how free he is. Paul is sitting in bondage mm -hmm. talking about being content in his situation. Amen. And so, and so just to go back to last week, we, 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 we talked about uh, the Greek word artikos, which meant self-sufficient, self-supporting, and being independent. Now, we understand that, that, that we are uh, all of these things to a certain extent because, you know, we always depend on God. Amen. We trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And Lee, I've said this long enough. Y'all y'all can repeat this with me. We trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not to our own understanding. We do what? Acknowledge him in all of our ways. And what will he do? He will direct our path. So we are not uh, totally self-sufficient, but we are always sufficient on him because we what? His grace is what? Sufficient for us when we are weak. When we get weak, he is strong for us. So we will always need him in our lives. Amen. But you see, the peace of God will cause us the ability, will present us rather, the ability to have peace in a hellish situation. Do I have anybody in here on today that can say that if God had not walked with me through what I went through, I would not have come out on the other side. If anybody in here knows that if God hadn't assisted me through Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, Nebuchadnezzar put them in a fiery furnace seven times hotter than it was supposed to be. He had all intentions on killing these three Hebrew boys. But when he checked Check the fire when he checked the furnace. Open the furnace. Let me check the situation. You see, every now and then, the devil is going to check on your situation to see if his imps are doing what they are supposed to do. Every now and then, the devil is going to walk by to see. You know, you remember the meeting they had over in Job? Satan, where have you been? I've been walking to and fro, seeking whom I may devour. Every now and then, he's going to walk around to see if you're still suffering. Every now and then, he's going to walk around to see if you're still pouting. Every now and then, he's going to walk around to see if he's still got your head bent down low. He's going to see if your confidence is still shot. He's going to see if you still have low self-esteem. But every now and then, he's going to see if things are still going bad for you. Never been never said, open up the furnace. Let me look in there. Let me see if they're toast yet. Let me see if they're burned yet. But they said that not even a hair on their arms was singed. It wasn't even the smell of smoke in their clothes. And Nebuchadnezzar took a closer gander. He said, wait a minute. I put three men in that furnace. Why is there four walking around in there? And why does one of them resemble the image of the Son of God? 
because he walks with me, he talks with me, he's there with me, you have a situation, hell can't get too hot, but Jesus got to be there with me, even if I make my man in hell, behold, he's there. Amen. So we're all, I said all of that, just to say that he's always there with us, and we're never self-sufficient, but we're always God sufficient. Self-supporting is what uh, 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 Articus means. Self-supporting. God supports us. We lean and depend on him. Not for some things, but for everything. I, I, I know I have the ability to do some things on my own, but I have to thank God for giving me that ability. Case in point, can I give you an example? Case in point, I know that when I wake up in the morning, I have the ability to put one leg in one pants leg and the other leg in the other and pull my pants on. Other, I'm saying I have the ability to put my pants on, but I have to thank God for the activity of my limbs before I use the ability that I have. Amen, somebody. So, so, so don't, 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 you get, don't you get too high on yourself. Because God can turn that thing around in the wink of an eye. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so that's why in all things, somebody say in all things, in all things, give thanks. Amen. I thank God for the abilities that I have. I thank God for the sound mind that I have. I thank God for the blood that is flowing warm in my veins. I thank God. I may not be eating caviar and, and, and filet mignon every day, but I thank God for the sardines and crackers if that's all I have. I thank God in all things. Give thanks. Let me say this here, Junior. If, if, if you start thanking God for the pork and beans and sardines, okay. I'll guarantee you one day you'll be sitting at the table. Yes. Amen. With the white tablecloths and the shiny silvers and things. I guarantee you, if you thank God for the little you have now, he will turn it into a whole lot later on. Uh, Bryson, I'm not talking about something I heard. I'm talking about things that I know. Amen. Amen. A amen. Not, 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 not to brag, but I said my grace over a Big Mac the same way I say my grace over, over the prime rib or, or the, or the ribeye at Ruth's Chris. Amen. amen. That, that same God that was sitting with me at McDonald's is the same God that's sitting at my table at Ruth's Chris and Fleming. Amen. So I, I thank God. I, I pray to God just as earnestly and, and with a grateful heart when I'm eating a triple cheeseburger than I do when I'm eating how in the hole. Amen. Amen. Can somebody say same God? Same don't, God. don't, 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 let me say this. Don't belittle what you have for anybody. Amen. The only competition that you have is with yourself to be better today than I was on yesterday. Amen. Somebody just say, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. We talked about last week. We talked about, I'm going to get out of here. We talked last week about Mysterion, the mystery of learning how to be what? Content. Mm -hmm. Paul didn't just wake up one morning and say, I can do all things through Christ uh, Jesus who strengthens me. He didn't just wake up one morning and say that. Understand, Paul wasn't 10 or 11, 12 years old with limited life experiences before he said, I can do all things through Christ. Paul was a veteran at life. Amen. Paul had some experiences. Paul knew what it was like to be on top as well as it was like to be on the bottom. That's right. Everybody in here has been at a place in your life on the bottom. Your bottom may not be as low as my bottom was, but everybody has been in a place Amen. of some type of struggle. Amen. Everybody has been in a place of some, of some situation where you did not have full control over the outcome. And the only thing you can do is lift your eyes towards the hills from which cometh your help, knowing, trusting, and believing that all of your help was eventually going to come from God. We've all been there. If you hadn't been there, buckle up your seatbelt because here you come. 
Mysterium. The mystery. And the reason why it is described as a mystery in the Greek is because everybody has not figured out how to be content in every situation. Amen? And I mean every situation. Some people who are filthy, stinking rich ain't got the common decency to be rich. Amen? You've got some rotten, nasty people with a pocket full of money who think they're better than you and I because they have more dollar figures. I think that's why I think that's why Jesus said it's more difficult for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to go to heaven. He didn't say it was impossible, but he said it's, it's, it's difficult. It's a hard thing to do. Because God sees all and he sees that some people that I have allowed, you see, every, every, let me say this too, every filthy rich person is not a blessing from God. It is some things God has allowed to happen in their lives. Amen. I, I, I can probably call some, Donald, Donald, I, I'm, I'm not, I could probably call some names. I could probably call a list of names that, 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 that I don't know. If it was a blessing from God or just something God allowed to happen. Amen. Amen. So so that's why it takes. Let me let me encourage somebody. That's why it takes a little longer for some of us to get to where we're going, because there's a process in God's blessing. That's right. Amen. God wants you. Let me prophesy, Bryson. God wants you to appreciate every step of the way. So, so that being said, some of us need to stop shouting next level, next level, next level and wait. And God is waiting for you to appreciate what he's done for you right here and right now. God is waiting for you to show contentment in your heart. You see, you can shout contentment with your mouth, but you have to show God contentment in your heart before you go to the next level. Amen. I don't think God minds any of us being wealthy and rich. But how many of you are taking care of where you are right now? Right. How many of you are glorifying God for the little that you have right now? The Bible teaches me that little in God's hands, he can turn it into much. Amen. So Paul, can call, Paul, let me say this right. Paul explains that contentment did not come naturally or automatically given to him by God. Now, wait a minute, Pastor. You told me that God would not withhold any good thing from me. And if contentment is a good thing, then why did not? Why didn't it come naturally? Because God knows that if it came naturally, that you wouldn't appreciate the ability to be content. I don't even want to ask who's content in their situation because somebody's going to lie and raise their hand anyway. But I understand this is a process. This is a learned process. Amen? Amen. A learned process. You have to learn to be content. How do you learn to be content? You learn to be content by going through the fire. Amen. You learn to be content by going through some difficulties in your life. You, I've said it before. I'll say it again. You learn how it feels to be healed after you've experienced some sickness. You learn how important it is to have after you experienced having not. Amen. 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 I'm almost through. Keep your eyes open just for a few minutes longer. Contentment is a learning process. Paul had to learn this spiritual discipline by walking with God through situations and challenges in his broken world. We have to learn to be content by walking with God through the broken situations in our lives. The Bible never ever told us to have a pity party. Even though there's going to be some times when we may be down, you need to thank God that when you were down, you were never out. You need to thank God. God, that when your head was hung low, your neck didn't break in that position, and he is the lifter of our heads. The Bible declares that even when our enemies say that there's no hope for us in God, the Bible says, but thou, O oh God, was a shield for me, my glory, somebody shall glory, and the lifter up of my head. And, and, and so the example is of being shown around a new job or living or a new facility and letting 
a, a superior show you the ropes. When you, when you, I say this as an example. When you, when you, you have to allow God to lead you through this thing called life. It's like going to a new job in a factory. I have a lot of factory experience. And it's like going to a new job in a factory and you just walk in the door and they say, go to work. They usually give you a tour of the facilities. They show you where things are. They show you where to go to do a certain task. They show you what to do, where to go, where to find this, where to find that. If you're in an office setting, they'll show you where the supply room, where the break room is. You know, sometimes on my tours, I got stuck at the break room, but they show you where things are. So, and, and, and we what? We trust the person that's giving the tour mm -hmm. to lead us and guide us in the right direction. So why is it that I can trust a stranger that I've seen for the first time to show me around a place that I've never been in, but I can't trust God who knows all, sees all, is everywhere. I can't trust God to escort me, show me, lead me, and guide me through this thing that we call life. But like I said, he formed it from the beginning, and now he's taking me by the hand. He's saying, King, don't go that way. There's danger. Don't go this way. There's harm. I need you to stay on the straight and the narrow. Don't veer off to the left. Don't veer off to the, uh, to the right. There's things on the left that's trying to kill you. There's people on the right that's going to entice you to do wrong. I need you to follow me down the straight and the narrow. Can anybody trust God? Amen. Paul says, I've been abased and I've been abound. I'm going to be done in seven minutes at least. He says, I've been abased and I've been abound. The Greek word abased means to humiliate, to talk down on. Paul says this life, this journey has had some humiliating situations. By talking right in the church on today. I have been humiliated. I have been embarrassed. But the fact that I have God on my side, I've learned to be content. Mm -hmm. You've got to stop putting too much stop into what other people say about you. Amen. 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 People, people get all toe up from the flow up over what somebody else said about me instead of what God is saying about me. I'm a treasured child of God and you can't tell me anything different. I'm blessed in more abundance in every area of my life and you can't tell me any different. Jesus came that I might have life and have it more abundantly and I chose to give my life to him so you cannot tell me that I can't expect abundant things to happen for me in my life not only in heaven but right here on earth. You can't tell me anything opposite of what this Bible is telling me about myself. Stop believing other people's opinions over the facts that God has given you. He says, I know how to be abound. To be abound means to exist or occur in abundance. That's, that's where I want to be. I want to exist and occur in abundance. If you sit in here and say you don't want more, I, I, I think you're telling a tale. Amen. If you didn't want any more than what you already have right now, quit going to work. Quit looking for ways to make more money because you don't need more money because you got everything you need right now. Now, now you can tell that lie until you blew in the face, but we all would like to have what? More. And there's nothing wrong with it because I'm not at abundance right now. And if God promised abundance, then there's nothing wrong with wanting more, but you gotta want it in Christ Jesus. Amen. So the challenge is today is to say that I'm good and be a self-prophecy to yourself. Speak the end of the battle. Come on, fellas, let's go to church. <laughs> Speak the end of the battle. Before you get there. Because to say that I'm good 
may not mean that I'm good right now. But I'm saying before the battle is over, I'm expecting things to go in my direction. I may be down right about now. And you can go ahead and take a picture of me. Because my situation is about to change. I may have my head down for the moment. But this is a Kodak moment. Because the next time you see me, you're going to see that the prophecy that I prophesied over myself is going to come into fruition. I need somebody that's going through right now to just shout out, I'm good. I'm not telling you a lie because I'm going through right now. But what I'm telling you is the end of the situation. I'm not speaking to my present self, but I'm speaking to my future self. I'm not speaking to my present situation, but I'm speaking to my future situation because I trust God in what I'm going through. And I'm learning to be content in the situation that I am in. I know you're doubting my abilities. I know you're doubting me for what you can see. But I'm glad I don't see what you see. Because I'm walking by my faith. And my faith is saying I'm coming out of this. My faith is saying I have the victory. Is there anybody here that can agree with me on this Sunday morning? That my faith say I shall win. My faith says I'm coming out. My faith says I am the head and not the tail. My faith says I am above and not beneath. My faith says I am a lender and not a borrower. My faith says I am healed and not sick. My faith says I have more instead of less. So why are you rejoicing when you're at the bottom of the barrel? I may be at the bottom, but I'm good. I'm struggling right now, but I'm good. I'm in a place of waiting right now, but I'm good because the Bible says the way they that wait on the Lord shall mount up on wings of eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. So I'm tired right now, but I'm good. I don't feel like going on, but I'm good because I'm speaking to the end and not to the beginning. I'm speaking to the end and not the present. Can somebody going through 
I'm content right here in my situation because I know God is making a way. Hallelujah. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to continue to pray about it because I know that God is hearing my prayer. And if I just hold on, uh, I feel like the old school church, if I could just hold on a little while longer, whoo, somebody shout, change is going to come. Hallelujah! 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 So the key, key to this process, get this if you don't get anything else, is to allow God to use all of your circumstances to teach you more in him, of him. Whatever you're going through, God is there. So allow him, instead of complaining, giving up. I heard a wonderful message the other day by my good friend, Dr. Joel Clark. And in that message, he said, filing a complaint is different from complaining. And the scripture he uses in Psalms, I can't remember the scripture, but it was David. He was saying, how long shall I go through this? How long shall I suffer? He was filing a complaint, but he wasn't complaining. Because he said later on in the scripture that his heart will still glorify God. So, so, so instead of complaining, and yeah, it's, it's good to know, you know how long this is going to happen. God may show you, he may not. Just stick with him. Amen? Amen. And so learn from everything that you go through. Trust it as a training session. Learn how to be gracious and humble. As Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, and I'm closing. In everything, let us stand. Give thanks. For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning us. That's the true praise. That's the real praise. Get this. The real praise is the one that you can muster up when things aren't going your way. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's easy to praise God when everything is lining up like you want it to line up. But the authentic prayer. If you, want, if you want to sacrifice the praise, the authentic prayer or praise is when things aren't going your way, but it does not, that external situation does not destroy the peace of God that is in your heart. That's when God is in your heart. It's when you don't change and flip-flop according to what's going on around you. Amen? Amen? That's why a woman with the widow's might could praise God through her giving just as strongly as the one that had a lot of money. Why? Because the peace of God was in her heart and not in her pocket. Amen? Amen? Amen. Detach. Detach yourselves spiritually from what you're going through. And I'll guarantee you, you will be better as a child of God. Amen. Amen. Attach more of yourself to him. Turn off, you get ready. Attach